Oh, wow, that's bright. Topic today is uh, hopefully something that will uncover a lot of the BS that's out there in relation to the acting industry. That bell just doesn't stop, does it? It's not even Sunday. The acting industry is notorious for selling dreams. They don't call it the dream selling machine for no reason. So with acting and voiceover work, the idea of making a lot of money and doing what you love and acting and having a fun time doing it. I mean, selling that dream is big business. But considering there actually seems to be more acting coaches and classes than there is paid acting work, it's gonna tell you something about the industry. And also factor in that spending thousands of dollars on acting training doesn't guarantee success. What should a beginner know before even starting in this business? A lot. But the voice acting business isn't all doom and gloom. There's a lot of very good reasons to get into it, but there just are a few things that you need to know before you start out. But I just don't wanna see other people going into this industry blind without any tips on what to expect. I can't wait to share this information with you, so let's get stuck in. Hello again. I had to get myself out of the park because there are a lot of like there's this guy that just stood there in the middle of the path whilst I was trying to record and just stared for six minutes as I was sitting there. When I got up, he then sat exactly where I was sitting, like not the 300 seats on either side of me that were empty, but I, I don't know, maybe he was waiting for me to warm it up. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to continue recording. I wanted to talk about some of the common messaging that goes on in the acting industry, such as... Oh boy. Why is it you have to be around in an industry for about three years before you realize this is not like the tourist brochure, this place is a dump. Okay, that was a bit of an exaggeration, but still, why don't people talk about this? Why? I want to make sure that I am chatting with you in a positive way, but there are a lot of eye-opening things to learn as a beginner. Being great does not guarantee success. Oh, this was such a kick to the privates when I learned this. The voiceover world seems to follow the TV and film acting world in this regard. You'd think that by doing classes, striving and striving, working hard, spending money on your equipment and just striving, that you would book a lot of work and become successful. Nope. There are a number of reasons why. That phrase, luck is when preparation meets opportunity. Hmm. I did this when I first started acting and I see a lot of other people doing the same thing. Working so freaking hard, but it can't be all preparation. There are so many actors I know who work incredibly hard. They're talented, they're funny, they've got a sharp mind, but they're not successful. I've learned to see it as opportunity comes when you strategically put yourself in the zone of it. A lot of actors are working incredibly hard and spending a lot of money on acting workshops and voiceover courses, but they never really leveraged themselves to put themselves out there to be in line with the opportunities. And I think that's why so many actors quit. I've been in the acting circles across three states of Australia now for about mm, well, just over 10 years. And I'm being conservative when I say probably two and three actors will quit within a few years of graduating from their course. Because there's a thought that if you work really hard and you brush up on your acting skills incredibly, that you will shine so bright that somebody's gonna pluck you from obscurity. This is the get discovered myth. I mean, sure, there are people who get scouted at 16 for having a pretty face and they get thrown into fame and success, but that is really a small percentage of people. For the rest, a few years go by, they're not yet discovered. I start thinking that, well, it hasn't happened yet. And the poor actor starts thinking it's never going to happen, that they're doing something wrong, that maybe they're talentless and then they stop trying. So what does actually help? You need people. You need to grow and build genuine relationships. You need to be known by other people. You need to know marketing. But I'm not talking about the spammy kind, I'm talking about building genuine relationships with studios and people around the world. Also, hanging in there and being consistent. 
staying in it long enough that you become known and they become trusted to do a great job. And what helps us get known? Well, firstly, a continually updated online presence. It's amazing how many actors don't have something as basic as their own website. You can get a free website. For example, Wix, I'll pop a link down below so you can start for free. Do you have a blog? Have you got the most updated social media platforms? Side note, it took me years before I got the blue tick on Twitter. Thank you, Twitter. But that only came because I spent like doing voice acting and putting myself out there and building relationships. Number two, know your coaches behind the workshops. There are a lot of workshops, classes, online courses, coaches, all willing to bring on new, fresh, beginning voice actors for a fee, of course. But what are the average costs you can be expecting to pay for coaching and classes here in Australia? Voice coaches can cost anywhere from $200 per hour upwards. But how do you know what coaches or classes to do? Who are the good ones? Especially in a country like Australia that is such a small market for acting and an even smaller market for voice acting. Well, things to look out for when you're a beginner starting your voiceover journey. I recommend only, only working with coaches and doing classes and courses with people who are active voice actors themselves. That is, they are active working voice actors earning money from voice acting and not purely from teaching it. it. Happens a lot. You'll hear of somebody who's running classes who said, oh, back in 2010, I was in radio. No, just no. That is not good enough. Only by doing it, by standing in the fire, by continually being exposed to what is current in the industry, is somebody gonna be able to give you that depth of experience at a practical level that's actually going to be able to help you. So save up your money and invest it wisely. The best voice coaches I've found are the ones who are voice actors themselves, but they also offer coaching. They aren't part of a studio that just churns over students through the doors. My career was absolutely fast tracked by working with only these coaches. I don't get paid to mention these people, but these are people I've either personally worked with or met and I highly recommend you get in touch if you're looking for a voice coach. I'll pop the links below so you can find their official sites. Although I don't offer one-on-one -on -one coaching, I have created an online course specific to voicing video games because that's my specialty. So if that's of interest to you, I'll pop a link in the comment below. Another way to find out about the top coaches is to ask your fellow voice actors, particularly those who've been in the industry for a while and have experience because they've probably learned the hard way and made a lot of mistakes and, uh, dealt with a lot of <sighs> and it's best to ask in a private setting such as a discord server or a private Facebook group because people are more willing to share the truth and be vulnerable and final point number three that having an agent will get you lots of work Whoa, I'd hate to rain on your parade about this but it's an absolute myth thinking that your agent is going to lend you all of this voice acting work is simply not true Agents will likely get you access to castings which are held by gatekeepers such as certain commercials, but the bulk of the work is going to be on you. Most of the jobs that I have booked, I have been representing myself. So I fully support and I think it's amazing when artists are representing themselves, especially when they're starting out. Don't be discouraged. There is a lot of work out there and you can book it. I've had an acting agent for over 10 years now. And even then, most of the acting and the voiceover work I have got myself, I'd say a solid 90% or more. And non-represented actors have such a wealth of opportunities now, particularly in the spaces like e-learning, corporate training, voiceovers, audiobooks, and now dubbing, which is becoming a really big thing. I didn't have a voice agent for 10 years. And in that time, I built relationships, booked a lot of work, connected with a lot of clients and took care of those clients. There's also the practical side to the agent topic. Agents don't have time to hold your hand. They're not managers. They're not gonna run your marketing campaigns for you. They're not going to update your social media accounts. No, you have to do that. In terms of getting the work, agents will get the casting breakdown. They'll go through their roster and figure out who will be the most appropriate voice voices for that role. That's it. Agencies are a business and business means making money. You need to be able to show that you're gonna bring money into the agency's business because it's a gamble for an agent to take on a new voice actor who has no experience and doesn't know how to set up their ABN or work their equipment competently from their home studio. Yes, that means voice actors do need to be unicorns now. You've got to be able to 
record your own audio, sound engineer your own audio to an extent, be a business person, a marketing person, make sure you're a money maker. You need to run your own business, make sure that you can cultivate the ability to look after your clients and deliver the best service you can. If you can't do these things alone, you sure as heck won't be able to do them if you have an agent who throws you an audition to turn around in four hours. That's literally how it goes. Also, you might just have a voice that the agency already has a number of clones of your type of voice on their books. So you may not be booking as much as you might like to due to sheer numbers. There are so many other things I could share with you about this topic, but that would make this video go for hours. Um, if you have any particular questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to answer them. I do read them all. And a shout out to Jack and Tolich. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Thank you for your comments on my prior videos. It was so exciting to read them. And everyone, feel free to drop a comment below because you don't know that what you have to share from your experience and from your perspective is going to help somebody else out in this community. And that would be fantastic.